Well, welcome to my Harlow, my life, and really pleased to say, good friend of mine, and of course, the man that was always by my side for the first few years of doing the Eastman show. Of course, he's uh, uh, Mixie, and how are we, mate? I'm fine, Dave. Uh, thank you very much for the invite. Um, trust you and your family are all well. I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. We're sort of uh, moving one day at a time. I think that's what everybody's got to do, isn't it? One day at a time. But uh, we, yeah. we, we're getting there. But yourself, so uh, uh, through uh, lockdown, everything was okay? Yeah, we're all, we're all good, thanks. Um, I've got two grown-up kids now who have all, uh, both still working but they're now working from home to their premises. So... I work from home as well, so it's a bit full on. We share rooms as we go along, so um, it's it's working out. Let's just say. <laughs> So, <laughs> so I know I know I made you laugh before, and you couldn't believe it. But uh, I mean, I say it wasn't until we started talking and started doing the shows that I think all the time we worked together, I didn't even realise you'd actually uh, actually uh, played for Harlow. So uh, apologies for that. But I mean, uh, well, when did you, when was it you first started at uh, at Harlow? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's really funny because like I've only played for Harlow probably about five years. <laughs> Ended up playing for Harlow for about five years. So, uh, yeah, um, I sort of um, got involved with Harlow with uh, a gentleman called Bill Daly, right, who was Harlow Town Youth Manager, right? But beforehand, I used to go down to the old sports centre and actually support Harlow uh, when they were in the um, Isthmian League and in, and in the Premier. So it was great under the old floodlights with a running track around it. I remember, and Ray White, we can give him a bit of it, I remember watching Ray... <laughs> Wicked play when I was a kid, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, so the first time um, I saw Harlow play was when um, Ian Wollstone was manager. And it was uh, leading up to the um, FA Cup run. So, uh, and Harlow were a good side. There was some great players, some really good players there. You know, I remember players like uh, Owen Griffiths, who I really do rate, was a good player. Ray, obviously, there. Paul Faircup was there playing as well. Um, Neil Prosser, people like that. Uh, they had, uh, I think, John McKenzie, Vic Clark, who then went on to sort of become assistant manager at Harlow. Um, uh, Paul Kitson, who was the goalkeeper, who was a school teacher. So I remember seeing them. And I used to be a bit of a, I, was, I suppose I was a bit of a football nerd. I used to list all the Harlow games and the scores and keep tabs, but I used to love it. Because it was like the closest thing to going to a football match. Because when I was a kid, um, my parents never had a car. So it was, you know, on a Saturday afternoon, it was great just going down there and watching them play under the floodlights, you know, mm. and uh, good memories. And, and of course, I was playing football. And then Bill Daly was Harlow Town Youth Manager. He invited me to play for Harlow Town Youth. Um, I got in the side. And then I made my first team debut when I was 17. And I remember, it, I got a phone call out of the blue, can you turn up at the uh, football club, we're playing, huh? you're with the first team, and I thought, oh, what, it's one of these where I'll come along and just watch, you know, get yeah. a feel for it and do like that. Get to Feltenham, who we were playing against, and this is Harlow's, they were in Division 2, or di no, Division 1, and they were in a promotion battle uh, with Farnborough at the time, and... Um, you know, I was there with everyone else, all these senior players. I didn't even train with them. That's the thing, right? <laughs> all these senior players. And uh, and then, at the time, Gwen Waters was manager then. And he said, right, um, Mixie Luke midfield on the left-hand side. And I went, what? And I went, yeah. And, you know, as a kid, you look at all the other senior players at first. And um, they was going, right, you're in. And... Uh, and that was it. And there was a couple of senior players who were left out. And I felt so bad at the time. But then that's football, you yeah. know, going on. And luckily enough, uh, we went out and we won the game 3-2 away. So, can you remember, um, can you remember it was against? Nice. Can you remember who that was against? Sorry? Can you remember it was against? Yeah, it felt... Yeah, I felt so felt them. Felt them. Right, sorry. And, and they, they literally, funny you say that, I'm sure that Feltham have just been on Sky Sports today. There's been uh, cameras down at their ground today because of the... Uh, Talking about the amount of people from like ordinary grounds as such, uh, sort of uh, Premier League teams, etc., etc., that have been now going into their ground to actually sit and watch, and they were talking about the track and trace and all that sort of business. So they were on uh, chairman, oh, and that wow. was all was all on there this morning. So it was quite quite fun, quite a funny thing. But with that, I mean, so that was quite a surprise for you. But I mean, did you, you know from from there on in, was you then sort of 
did you cement a place or did you get taken back out again and I think I, I, I think I'm in Debbie towards uh, March time right and and Queen was really good I, I got to train with the, the senior players and I was in part of the first team squad and I think what happens as a youth team player or as a new player coming into into a first team scenario the adrenaline kicks in mm. so for the first three or four games did really really well and then the sort of the intensity I know it sounds it's maybe not the right word intensity but the commitment of playing Tuesday Saturday and then the promotional battle as well don't forget we were all in the next of trying to get up into the Premier League um, I think I don't know the level of expectation so it maybe went a little bit beyond me in the sense like I just you know I was playing for fun you know what I mean I was really enjoying it but I was enjoying it but I didn't realise how serious to a certain extent that level of football was and I think we had a couple of bad results and I think that sort of um, affected me in a way and my game started to play and I think Green was right he sort of then dropped me and thought you know maybe it was a bit too much too soon for me to do that um, so I was playing like a reserve team football for Harlow at 17 and, and obviously you team but I got a, I think I've got at least about a dozen games for that season you know and um uh, I was really pleased with it, and and, and we were fortunate enough. Harlow got promoted, so it was. I think the last game was Farber, and they drew two two. But I wasn't involved on the last game, so uh, that was great. You know, so I could say that in my first season, I won promotion. <laughs> But with that, though, did he did he keep you in and amongst it, like during training and, and and away games and stuff like that, or was it was he keeping a young lad sort of in in amongst it, so getting you used to the? Um, from what I recall, it, 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 not really. No, there was still that separate entity, you know, first team, reserve, and youth team, and there was we wanted to get a culture of like you know get the youth team into the reserves reserves into the first team and he was trying to get a lot of homebred players and back then there was a lot of homebred players you know there were people like uh, obviously Andy Walker was playing Mark Das was playing there was um, uh, Ray oh, Ray Prosser I think was playing I'm not sure Ray Whitton I think had gone to Stalkford then uh, I, I think Alan Griffiths there was a few Harlow based players there in the team and he was trying to encourage that I think at one point it was about seven or eight Harlow based players in that promotion mm. side so which was really really good I think it was almost unheard of at the time that so many home based players were in promotion with the team do you think that's you know, the way to go as a as, as a as a as a team it is what now yeah I mean Christian was saying that he felt that that was something that you know that if he ever got you know so for, he said he, he said to me so like literally if he was ever announced at any time uh, you know that he was a he was Harlow manager or whatever else that he would, you know that that's one way that he would look at going to try and get some kind of identity back into the club. I would love that to happen, but I think football as it is today, it almost uh, demands instant success, mm. right? So it can happen, but it'll take a number of I believe a number of seasons for it mm. to occur because you've got to evolve it all the time. And because of that demand of instant success, right, um, I can't see it. Unless we change that culture and the fans are, are, can understand it, the chairman can understand it, you know, that we can do it, but it'll take five, six seasons for it to happen, then yes. But if they want clubs to do it, right, here's your, in five, five seasons, we want you to play some, you know, football conference or National League South or National League North, then I don't think that can happen. Mm. And I think the higher the level you go up, the less likely it's going to happen. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because, dare I say it, the quality in every tap, you won't have that quality. Mm. So it's, yeah. you know, I'd love it to happen, but I think the lower you go in the league, more if more realistic it will happen but the higher you step up i think the less likelihood of it happening mm. so in that in that sort of first season well what was the what was the highlight for you in that first season just the first game or was there something there that was a you know uh yeah probably in the first game do you know what i still remember some cock-ups as well right <laughs> i remember i think we were, we had a, a game against kinstonian and again it was 17 i had and we lost 2 1, and we were awful. And I, it started to think, but I remember I was playing wide on the right, and the ball came over to me, right? 
and I went to control it and the ball just bounced over my foot and off the pit and I just thought what a nightmare do you know what I mean? It's the worst thing that could have happened. Like, and Green goes like, "Come on, come off!" Like, I think it's affected. <laughs> and we come away from it. But the biggest thing I realised is how big of a step up it is from mm. youth team to reserve to first team. You know, reserves. You, a lot of it you were with your mates at the time, and a lot of it is local players. Whereas with first team football, you get players from outside, and obviously they're not a little bit older, so they know and understand what it's like to play at that level. And I think that's the biggest impression. It, it suddenly, it was, you know, this is real. This is like top level football in terms of points are at stake, promotion are at stake. It isn't like you can forget about it and, you know, and sort of, it mm. is like, let's play football and let's win the game so we can get, we can play at a higher standard, mm. you know. And were, I'm suddenly playing up against players who are ex-pros or who have been in the league a lot longer than me, you know. And um, it was great. I loved it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But I needed to play in well, you know, that. So what about what about the dressing room now? What was that like walking into a dressing room now when you know you're? I was the young, young kid, kid, mate. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I was a young, young kid. kid. I was giving all the. Yeah, I don't know. Some, some players. I. It's a bit unfair. I don't think, think they resented me, but they thought they were looking over their shoulders. We were thinking. You know, is this a change for me? It's happening, up and coming players, up and coming young player coming in. Yeah. You know, in that in that midfield role, or whatever. You know, what I mean, it was. You know, there were some players who thought who maybe I played in their position, and they were a little bit older, and they couldn't understand why I was playing in that position. Mm. You know, so yeah, it's it's a training room. It's mm. you know. They were all good to me, don't get me wrong, but you can also sense, like, you know, it's a little bit of a dog-eat-dog, dog. Not, you know, not in a horrible way, but it's a way, like, hang on, I've got... I think Gwyn brought me in to buck up the ideas maybe of some of the players in there, you know? So... Did he get... Did he get if you were good enough, Gwyn would always play you. Yeah. If you were good enough, you were able enough to play. Did it get easier as it went on, though? Um, no, I don't think so. I think it's easier when you win. Yeah. It's not as easy when you're at the other end, you know, as well as winning well promotion with Harlow Town, you know, both with Gwyn and with Dave Edwards, I got relegated with Harlow Town, you know, so I think both sides of it, and, um, you know, it's, 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 you know, you get wrapped up when you're winning, you don't feel you're going to lose, you know, when you're up in the near about the promotion side, you look around the players and you think, we're going to beat this lot, but when you're on the other side of the coin, on the relegation side, it's really difficult. You know, no matter you can see that you know you're you're a little bit more wary of making a mistake. Um, you start, and maybe it's human nature, but you start possibly thinking, why is he in the team? You know, why? You know, etc. etc. So it's 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 hard, but again, I don't regret it. You know, I've seen both sides, so I can understand how what a player's going through on that side of thing, mm. you know. And they've both got different types of pressure. One is to get promoted, one is to avoid relegation. And it's it's really weird, you know what I mean? So So what was that like for you then going into the going into the end of season, the pre season for next year? I mean was it a so was was your aim going into your into your next season to actually uh, you know be in that first team squad on a permanent basis? It was and you know what happens, right? When I got dropped as such right I really hated it resented it because I thought hang on why am I being dropped at a time you know I'm thinking I'm just as good as him and all that like and um, I wanted first team football so but Bill Daly he was a really good um, coach in terms of um, advocate, uh, advocates in uh, youth mm. he, want, you can, he wanted all the youth team players to play first team football so, I don't know whether it was a bit of a fallout, but he ended up the following season over at Salford with Trevor Arley. And they never had a, a youth team to reserve team set up, right? So, I ended up the following season, despite Harlow winning promotion into the Premier League, I ended up playing over at Salford. Um, signed off in the reserves for about two games. Trevor watched me, and then he put me in. Uh, my first game to Salford, again, I was still... Um, I think I was just 18 then was against Tootie and I scored the winning goal we went one nil up and then the following week uh, we played Wickham Wanderers and we beat them 2 and I scored again right 
And this, this is what I, you know, I went to Salford because, not only because of um, Bill, because he was a great manager, a youth manager, but also Ray Wickenham was there that I knew about. He didn't really know me, but I knew of him. But also, what right about favourite boyhood heroes of mine was um, assistant Kelly, which was John Rackford. Right? Mm-hmm. And to play under him as well, you know, and, and uh, you know, I loved the Arsenal 1971 side, you know, and John Rathburn and all this like. I mean, I can, I thought, wow, this is a chance and opportunity, do you know what I mean? And, uh, mate, if you ever get a chance to write, he was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. He hated, but you can tell the difference between a pro and a long league player, right? Mm. And I always think, like, when you play with, when I've ever played with a pro, Whenever they cross that white line, it's all or nothing to win. Whereas, and, and if they lost, they'd be thinking about it right up until the next game, mm. or the next, right? Whereas most, and I don't know if it's true or not, but for me, I would hate that day, that night, Saturday night, but come Sunday afternoon, I would have forgotten about it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas the pros would be thinking, right let's put this right for the next game mm-hmm. do you know what I mean and that's what I think the mentality was and John was like that but he, but he was a great guy John he is well he still is I suppose well on John and away from Harlow just for a minute is it yeah. is it me or as we've got older Charlie George's goal from 1971 seems to be get nearer and nearer and nearer the goal <laughs> no, I think it's no, it still a great goal. It's I mean? a great goal, but I think you know, from when I remember it when I was a kid, it felt like yeah. it's a lot further out than what it is now. Yeah. You watch That's because we were a lot smaller. <laughs> <laughs> we had smaller TVs. <laughs> it just looks so, you know, it looks so much cl- closer now. It, it almost looked like the halfway line when we was a kid, and now it's no. almost on the box. But, but again, but, I played, I played about twenty games for Stolfin in that season. We played Harlow away on. Um, Boxing Day, and we've done them like 4 1, something like that. And I remember, bless him, right, Andy Walker. I, I come on a sub, and I was on the side, same side as Andy Walker, and I put this tackle in, right? And Andy Walker was turned around and goes, I thought we were mates. I said, Yeah, when we finished the game. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that was, that's what all the football was about, you yeah. know. As soon as we all the players crossed that line, it was, you know, players as well as you could as hard as you could right finish game we're all mates you know no matter who we were playing against yeah. you know so, so how, long, how, how long was you at Stortford for was it, was it Stortford then well, back, to, back to Harlow no only about two seasons right and then um, I went back to Harlow um, played under Gwyn well no I played under David Woods no was it Gwyn no Gwyn first that's where I met obviously Leo and everything and then played under David Woods you know and um and I played for Dave for about four seasons, roughly. On there. So I, I asked Leo the same question. What's the what was the difference between Gwyn, Gwyn and, and and Dave? Do you know what I mean? What was the difference with you know in the two managers? I think Gwyn wanted to get youth into it, and you can see when you look at his side. If you go back to the records, you look at his side. They were a fairly, they were a fairly young side, mm. right? Dave initially brought in. I mean, Dave's first season wasn't good, right? In a sense, he bought um, a lot. David just won the tri- um, the bars with Stance did, right? And him and Dave Odell came over. And um, I suppose I went over there. And he, it was almost like, because they'd come on the, on the back of winning the bars and also more or less, I think they were runners up in the Essex Senior League or, or they were always there or thereabouts, right? They had a, they were of a winning mentality. Now the difference between Essex Senior and Ryman football was a big jump because suddenly you've got players who are really more, in a way, um, a little bit better on quality, right? And the level of commitment was a lot more as well. You know, it was Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays. Whereas up at Essex Senior League, I can only. Um, it was training there, but the level the the level was sometimes you could play really you might play you might have six hard games a season, whereas in in the Ryman League or the Isman League, right, every game seemed to be hard. No matter if you were near the bottom or fighting near the top, every team it's a bit like the football league really. Every game was a battle to win, and and it was you know 
I think Dave was want, was desperate to get success and he brought in these players. But some of these players, you know, they'd done it and then suddenly they've been asked to do it all over again at a different level, which maybe was a bit too much. I don't know. So, But Dave was a great man manager. Do you know what I mean? He was really, really good. And so was Dave Uddle. You know, um, they wanted success. And we tried to give it to him. And you wanted to play for Dave and you wanted to play for Gwyn, both of them. But they were both different types of football managers. Mm. So what was it like going back to, to, to Hull after playing for the, you know, the, the, the opposition, shall we say, and, and then going back in there? Was was, was What sort of uh, feedback? Well, to, be, to be honest, right, Dave, um, we were in Division 1, I think, at the time. And we got relegated that first season, right? Um, but I remember we played Stortford, right? And I just wanted to do one over the sofa for, for not playing, do you know what I mean? And I remember that we played them away and um, we beat them 2-0 at old, the old Rhodes Avenue. And uh, I walk, <laughs> I'm blessing. I know Trevor's no longer with us, unfortunately, but he resigned on the day after the game. Do you know what I mean? And um, it was it was kind of sad that that happened. You know, it sort of took a bit of the gloss away from, from winning, you know, and... Um, but I, you know, it was again, it was another life experience for me mm. on that side of thing. And then we were in Division Two North back then, and I think the first season we were always there or thereabouts. We had a really good side, right? And I think we just finished outside promotion. We had a bad run in. I think we weren't experienced enough to uh, take it on board. But the following season we won it, and hence, you know, we I think we had Jeff Wood come in. And I mean, he scored like 44 goals in that season. Um, and it was, you know, it's phenomenal. The way we played football as well, we were all in it together. And we built this, I've never experienced it before at, at that level, you know, a big family atmosphere. You know, it was incredible. You know, we had fans coming on the coach, going to away journeys with us, you know. Um, we had some great characters, Steve Perkins, the Welsh midfield dynamo he would bring like um someone would bring in like a, a, a radio cassette you know box as such and we have music in the changing rooms before music after it was i don't know what the opposition must the opposition must have thought we were mad do you, you know what i mean do you want to explain to everybody what a radio cassette is no i'm not going <laughs> to say that <laughs> we where well, we actually had to push buttons yeah. and a little side pocket thing came out <laughs> and put a tape cassette in you know what i mean <laughs> but they were really good, you know. It was we were a really good side, you know. Um, and a lot of the players that played in that side went on to play for other clubs, you know, at a higher level. So that's how good the players were at the time, you know. So that picture that you sent me earlier on, and we'll bring it up. I mean, what what uh, what uh, what manager was this under? I mean, what and what sort of era was was this? For those right, I think I think it was um, 1987. Mm -hmm. I think I think I was about 22, 23. So it's 1987, 1988, around that time. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I can't see it on my screen for some <laughs> reason. So I'm having a guess on it, right? Um, so Dave Edwards is there with Dave Odell. Yeah. Right? And then you've got Mickey Stevens, the physio, right? Um, Sticky, we used to call him. Right. I don't know why we called him Sticky, but we used to call him Sticky. Odds was brilliant. He was a, you know, he was the, uh, it was like Pascal and Dempsey, you know, Pascal and Dempsey, you know, act. You know, Dave would like, Dave's passionate, was really passionate about football. He, he, he virtually kicked every ball while we were playing, you know. Yeah. And, um, and Dave would be the calming influence on it, the side of things like that. Um, then there were players like, um, obviously, I think Ray's there. There's Mitchell Thomas's brother there, right? Who used to play for Spurs. Yeah. Uh, Richard Emerson, who played, who came from Harringay Borough. He was a really good player. Jeff Woods, goal scorer. Kevin Barry was a local boy. Um, you got Gary there. I can't remember. That. Dean Yoel is a local boy. We've got Andy Walker. Mate, I'm doing this from memory because I can't see the photo. So I'm you like, be on your you sent it to me. Yeah, I know I sent it to you, but I can't see it. I'm saying you'd be able to see it on your phone because it'll be on your phone, wouldn't it? But no, I yeah, mean, let me have a look on there. Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, they force it, I think. I mean, the Boise brothers. What's the Boise brothers? 
So there's a cup at the front. What's the cup? Is that the uh, cup? That's the league. That's the, oh, league. That's the, league. That's right. the league trophy right. at the time. That was. So um, we oh. played where? It's really terrible because my mates always say, you remember every game you play in. I say, I remember the games that we won, remember the games that I've scored in, right? <laughs> and the re- remember the games where we suffered a big loss when, you know, it was awful. Um, here it is. Yeah. So we've got... We've got Mr. Alan Howick from left... Right, as I look at it, right, we've got um, Mr. Alan Howick. He was the chairman. Mickey Stevens, we've got, I think that's um, Phil Boyce, right? Then we've got Stan, I can't remember his name, he played under Gwen Waters, Stan the man we used to call him, Lightning, he was a forward. Then we've got Ta- Dave Edwards, then we've got Dave Oddles. Next to Odds, we've got Richard Emson. Then we've got Stevie Walduck, Kevin Barry, Martin Gittins. Then we've got the other Boise brother, Paul, I think. Then we've got Dean Yoel. And then coming down, we've got Stuart Inglewitz, Tony Little, local boy, Dave Farron, local boy. I know his, his name was Thomas, but I can't remember. His brother played for Spurs at the time, so I can't remember. His, Mitchell Thomas was his brother. We've got Richard Ed, local boy. And then on the floor, we've got Jeff Woods, myself. Oh, I can't remember him. Oh, he was lightly no. Oh, I feel terrible now. Right. You're the, we, are we both hands on the floor? Both hands on the floor is me, obviously. Right. <laughs> and then next to me we had Stevie. Um, we had Steve. I can't remember. I just I know him because I got him. <laughs> Andy Walker, and then we've got Gary as well. There's Leo. So, Leo not part of that squad. No, I don't think he was. Right. He, I thought he was at the time. No, I think we got rid of him because we put Mitch on there. <laughs> Thomas. So, sorry, Leo. He'd gone by then. Yeah, bless him. But uh, we drew with Ware one all on that day. It I was mean, a terrible game. You look at you look at that you look at that picture there, and I must admit, you look over at Dave Edwards in, in the raincoat there, and he, he looks like Alex Ferguson. No, that's not hey, that's Alan Howick. Oh, is it? Oh, sorry, right. Yeah. So, he was the chairman, mate. Dave, um, Dave Edwards is four from the left right next to Stan the man yeah I got him now yeah yeah got picked him up now yeah yeah and Hobbs is next to him on it so but yeah it was like you know when you look at it there's about six seven players from Harlow in that squad so um that shows, yeah. then, I suppose that shows that if you've got that you can you know you can you can actually do that then doesn't it you know with, yeah. with those yeah. players if you put yeah. that, uh, sort of stuff into it then you know you could it is feasible to have a team from, you know, the local areas as such. And I think it's a bit what Christian was saying. Is, is quite a lot of players in the Isthmian North and in the Isthmian South Central that actually live in Harlow. So he's, he was yeah. saying, you know, that you could bring them all in together if you could get them. That is another thing. He said because he, he felt that they may be cheaper because they haven't got to travel in and, and stuff like that. So he felt that could be a bit of a bonus, a bonus as well. But so so... That there then was your what your second spell at, at uh, Harlow. Yeah, yeah, and um, and it's really funny. I think um, I won like players' player of the year or something like that at the time, and then the following season we played um, in Division One, and it's really funny because I had a theory, right? Whatever I used to dread, um, if you won the player of the year, right, I used to dread the following season because it just meant he was going to get have a bad season, <laughs> right? And I didn't. I think um, I played, don't get me wrong, I played, but I weren't getting as many games because obviously, you know, Dave and Hodge thought we had to improve the squad. But Stevie there, he won it. And the following season, he hardly got a game and he left. And I think I moved, I think we played, we had a game. Um, so I stayed on for another cut of seasons or something like that towards the end of that season. And I think towards the end of that season, we played Hartford Town. And then Mr. Paul Fairclough was manager at Hartford Town. And um, we beat him like 2-0. And I remember coming off at half, at half time and for the team talk. And Hodds comes over to me and he says, just do what you're doing now. He said, because I, I was just, and I'm not trying to boast it, but I was on fire. I don't know why. It was just, a, it was like a really good game. And of course, Paul Fairclough was um, manager then. 
he then um, on that day, and then the following season, I got loaned out to Hartford, and Paul was manager. Yeah. And I scored like four goals in seven games, and then the rest is history in the sense that he then went on to become manager at Stevenage, and he asked me to come along with him. And you know, right? And a bit like you, Dave, I've got a real passion for football, right? Money never really come into it as such, right? And one of the main, I mean, I dropped a league to go down to Stevenage, right? And the reason why was their facilities. You know, I played on their pitch and it was just like a, a snooker table, mm. you know, in terms of the quality on there. And I, they and their crowds as well, they were always getting four, 500 people, you know, and I thought, you know, give it a go. And, um, you know, I played, I think I was there for four, uh, four seasons or three seasons with Stevenage. And they ended up being two seasons, being like reserve team manager and things like that. So I really enjoyed it up to there. Mm. So, um, but where, where, where was Stevenage at that time then? What sort of division were they in? They were Division 2 North. Right. Right. Uh, they just missed out on promotion before when Paul Fairclough uh, took over. And then the rest of, like the first season, it was really funny. Paul got a team of players and he knew you know with Paul he got a, a team of players that just wanted to play football you know it was wanted to play football on a decent surface and I think we ran away with the league Harlow were in division one at the time then and doing really well to be fair Dave I think I mean with that team with Harlow I think we also got to the Eastern Floodlit Cup final and we lost to Dover 2-0 um, but in the season where I played for Stevenage in Division 2 North, I think Dave's, um, they won the Eastern Floodlit Trophy in that year, or the East Anglian Cup, they won it. And they had a pretty good team as well. Um, so in our Division 2, in our league back then as such, we won the league by about 26 points, 25 points. We, you know, Martin Gittins, who played for Harlow then, um, he then came over to Stevenage. He was scoring goals for fun and things like that. And the amazing thing is, right, we all wanted to play because of the pitch. It was really, really fun. And the crowd, it was, the pitch was perfect, mate. It was one of the best pitches in, in the league. And it, it just encouraged you wanting to play football. And Paul Fairclough, he was, out of all the managers I've had, he was probably the one that was nearest to a football coach as well as a football manager. Um, and he, and you know, he used to set points, targets. He used to uh, set up pattern of play. Um, he'll put positions on the wall for before the games, so you knew where to stand on free kicks, corners, attacking, defending. You know, and to me, it's like, wow. Do you know what I mean? Whereas the other coaches, it will be verbally said, but you mm. wouldn't see it. And and he made sure it was, you know, it was a different level of uh, football coaching. So, and he, he'd done all his badges. So I suppose that's what encouraged them, them to do. Mm. So, but again, you know, it was good fun. Yeah. So when, when you went in there for your second spell, I mean, what was the first game back for you when you, when you went in there to uh, the Tyler second back? We played pre we obviously had pre-season friendlies, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and we'd done really well in those. And then um, the first season, I think we got, obviously we got relegated down to Division 2. Right, and then on that first season, I remember we had Tony Little come in as a centre forward, right? And uh, he he was always known as a really good Sunday morning player, right? Really good, known. And Dave persuaded to come along, and suddenly we had this guy who was a who was a big guy, very quick, and he was phenomenal. Up until Christmas, mate, he was knocking goals in for fun. He was great outlet for me. Uh, for I was playing in midfield at the time. We had everyone encouraged being played. I remember going away to Collier Row, right, and I bought second game of the season, right, and I went away with Ray Wicked, and I thought, God, Collier Row are always a tough unit, tough enough to crack over, particularly over there, Greg. We beat them like 5 1, and Tony Little scored four, right, and um, but the way we beat them as well was phenomenal, they couldn't believe it. And, and do you know what? The worst thing is, right, they ended up getting promotion. <laughs> we played them twice, and I think we beat them 5-1, and we drew 0-0 at home with them later on in the season. But I think, you know, they obviously had experienced players that came through and knew what it was all about, and we were a relatively new team, and we just unfortunately lost it. But the following season, we learnt from that experience, 
and we got the team and we got up. You know, we got promoted. So, so well, with with the uh, sports centre, I mean, what was that like to play in? I mean, I remember it. I remember it, it, it being there because of the ski slope and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, but uh, you know, that, that that sort of ground was probably before my time. So, but what was it? What was that actually physically like to to, to play there? Do you know, like um, I've been fortunate enough to play with um, in in games where I've had four six thousand people and things like that. You know, watching the game, and to me, a football pitch is a football pitch, mm. right? Um, obviously. The sports room was sometimes exposed to the elements because of the wind and everything, right? And But once you're on that pitch, it's like any other pitch, you know. They say about home advantage. I think that comes into it. The more you play on it as the season goes on, right? Mm. When you go away, there's an, a little bit of... Um, you're not familiar with it, so you're sort of not sure where, how the, where you're going to hit the ball, will it stay on or that. Whereas on the sports center pitch, it'll start off really well, by the end of the season, mate, it would be like a bare patch. You know what I mean? It was, it, it'd be rock hard. You know, it was, oh, it was awful. And, you know, towards the end of the season, we'd be playing sometime Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. Mm. You know, home and away, home and away sort of thing. Um, but, um, you know, I'd love it if, you know, not, you know, I'd love it if it was kept to the same condition throughout the season. But unfortunately, it wasn't come Chris. Come Christmas time, I remember playing a, a, a game where I scored a, a hat trick against Maidenhead. You know, we played on Boxing Day. The pitch was absolutely frozen, right? And I remember Pope. Do you remember the ref Pope? Yeah, it comes from me. Yeah, yeah. Right. He was a world. He ended up being a, a Premier League ref and a World Cup ref. And he was refing the game in his younger days, right? And I remember him. He went out with a cup, his linesmen. They had the football boots. They had a the ball. They bounced the ball on the pitch, passed it to each other. And I mean, the pitch was rock hard. And they said, yeah, that's playable. And we and off we went. We played. And we played maiden it. We were 3-1 down. And we won 4-3. And I ended up scoring a hat trick. <laughs> I scored two penalties. And the last goal, like I say, I always remember the goals. And I remember the person who crossed it was a, a, a guy called Mickey O'Sullivan. Crossed the ball from the left and I scored with a diamond header. So that was nice. <laughs> you say yeah. that, though. I mean, when I was doing youth football, though, uh, uh, for one of the clubs in Harlow, and, and we, we had to go and play one of the teams there. And I think it was uh, Langley Cutson and uh, Risden Wood went over to, um, uh, over to the, the pitch, got to the game, and, and literally you could see the ice on the top of the surface. And these are only under sevens. Do you know what I mean? You could see the ice on the top of the surface. Yeah. And the referee walked along and went, now nah, we can play on this. Oh, hang on. <laughs> What's going on? But he, he made them play, you know, like 20 minutes each. Well, I don't say 20 minutes, no, no. But there were six-year-old kids playing on like a sheet of ice. It was just unreal. Absolutely. Yeah. But we, we, well, we were, t- we were tougher back in the yeah. days. It's not like these days. Do you know what I mean? Gets cooled off with a bit of rain. <laughs> you know what I mean? We, was, we were a tougher, tougher breed. Do you know what I mean? Look, what, what was White stuff. That second second sort of period of being there, what was the what was the highlight for you then? What was the the, 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 the one game that sticks out in your mind? Oh, so many. Seriously, there were so many. I, I mean, I ended up um, I scored two hat tricks for Harlow, which was good. Um, one, the second one was in a five nil win against Tring, and we had a, a, an ex dancing player called Jamie Reeves, who I think he's a commentator in Hong Kong, or he used to be. I don't know. Right, he ended up in Hong Kong. He was a school teacher. Great header of the ball, do you know what I mean? He's, and uh, he won the Vars uh, medal with Stanson. Great player. Um, just used to feed off him. Used to head the ball. Well, I knew where he was going to head it, and I used to just run on the score. Um, I remember playing Farnborough away, right? This is a defeat. And I think we look, um, it was a League Cup, and I think we ended up losing something like 8 2 away, right? Which is, Farnborough at the time were flying. Do you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. They were really, really good side then. Um, but the cup finals, you know, with Dave, the Eastern Floodlit Trophy at Dover, that was a good game. I really enjoyed that. That was a great day out. Um, winning the league with Dave as well. Um, Gwen Waters giving me the opportunity, obviously, with Feltham. You know, that was brilliant. And really having a lot of interaction with all the players you know i still remember a lot of them although sometimes i might forget their surname but they were all good training was always um 
you know, with Dave, it was always fun and interesting. You know, um, there was that desire to win all the time. And then, you know, I went on and, I, you know, I enjoyed every minute. I did go back one year, third time, <laughs> but this time as a reserve team manager as um, under Jeff Woods. So did you, the time. When, when you when you finished playing and that, did you ever want to get into managing? I, I sort of wanted to get into more football coaching, right? Um, I, I love the idea of football coaching on that side of things. Um, in terms of management, I'd seen the stress levels, you know, the stress level of trying to win promotion and the stress level of trying to keep a, a team in the league, mm. not suffering relegation. And I've got to take off, take my hat off to all non-league managers, you know, and their coaches and whatever. You know, it's a it's a really big thing to do because a lot of them are doing it because of their love of football and they want to do it because it's something that they feel they need, they can contribute going back into football. Mm. You know, a, a lot of it aren't doing it for the money. They want to do it because they love it, mm. you know. But, this, you know, from what I've seen of the managers that I've played under, it's, um, you know, I can do it. Mm. You know, I've got... A, I've got a job and a family and things like that, and uh, I just want to keep it at that side. The football coaching is is great, yeah. you know. But even like when I was reserve team manager, it's nothing. Um, when you sort of, you know, when the first team manager says to you, which happened to me a couple of times, you need to tell him he's got he needs to be released. It's not a nice thing to do, yeah. you know. So, uh, nah. Is the answer? What, what was what was the uh, you said about the dressing room? Because being a youngster going into the dressing room the first time, I mean, the, 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 sort of on the second spell. What was the dressing room like then? Was that you know? Did you get welcomed? You know, with open yeah, up I, and, and, yeah, definitely. I think we were we were fairly a bunch of new players, so we didn't know each other. But I was a little bit older mm. as well, and and I had seen the dressing room in Stortford and seen the dressing room first time round in Harlow, so I was a little bit older. So. Um, it was a little far easier. I wasn't a young kid, although I was, I was still only about 20 at the time, mm. right? Um, so it was a little bit easier. I was a lot more confident in myself, in my ability in, at playing at that level now. Um, and there was, and I think it always helps, like you say, when you're winning, everyone gets on, right? When you're losing, it's a different kettle of fish. Yeah. You know, you get different characters coming through. Um so we were fortunate, you know, Dave and Dave Oddle both made sure that we had a, it was almost like a family tie. But the following, when we got relegated, I think the, the club needed it at the time because we lost a lot of good players. A lot of players had come to the end of their career and Dave was basically a, a fairly new team. Um, you were asked, that were asking them to step up from Essex Senior to Division One. And that's a big jump. Mm. You know, there was a Division Two there. And that's a big job and a big ask for players to do that. Um, and so dropping down a league probably helped players like me, who are youth team, to get more experience playing in that sort of level of football against senior players. And then the following season, the rewards were there. You know mm. what I mean? So um, Steve Perkins was a good guy. That's the guy. I can, so Steve would never forgive me now. <laughs> So uh, with, with, the but, yeah. with the players you played with, do you ever get a reunion or anything like that? Do you get back to see them? Um, I still keep in, we sort of keep in touch from time to time. Andy, I still see from um, on the odd occasion as such. Um, I've seen Mark Das. He's over at uh, Takeley on there. Ray Wickenden, I bump into from time to time. Um, Steve Waldup is still very much involved in non-league football. Um, Leo... Funny enough, I haven't seen this, apart from that radio show. He hasn't changed really. He still looks the same size as he played. <laughs> <laughs> Hods, I see from time to time. Mickey Stevens as well, you know, um, on that side of things, you know. So um, yeah, they're all still about as such. I don't, I don't feel we'll get a reunion. We're too far apart, mm. to be honest, you know. And you know what I'm talking about is 30 years ago. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's 30 odd years ago now. So, um, yeah, um, it was really funny because I bumped into once on the tube. I was going up to, I was on a tube platform and I bumped into, I think it was Phil Boyce. 
and I hadn't seen him for about 10 years and he hadn't changed, right? So I said to him, you know, what are you doing now? He, <laughs> he goes, oh, I'm just training for my first boxing bout. This guy was 40. I'm going, what? And he was always a bit of a nutter on the football because if he, he was at Harlow and you could see like if, if he lost his rag on the pitch, that was it. He was like the next player was going to be on the floor and he'd be sent off. And I'm going, what? And he went, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm training. I've got one of these um, gentleman boxing things. And I went, oh, I thought, well, good luck to you, right? But then I thought to myself, well, I remember playing with you. You were always a bit of a nutter on the pitch. <laughs> but, um, do, you ever get, do you ever get back to well, to Barrow's farm now? Do you, do you go up there to watch the team at any time? To be honest, I think the last time I went, when Harlow got promotion, mm-hmm. you know, in that playoff, which I really enjoyed. Um, and then... I sort of got more involved on the coaching side uh, with Andy Scott. I don't know if you know from the Ipswich Academy side and things like that. And but I still keep tabs. I still keep looking out for their football results and uh, see how they're getting on. And you know, in a way, I, it's difficult because my, my lad went through the academy at uh, Ipswich Town. So a lot of my Saturdays and Sundays was with him as well through his. Uh, football journey and then he played a couple of seasons for Soham Town funny enough before he got injured um, and now you know I just enjoyed just going out and watching him play you know on a Sunday he's now back playing football and it's great but it's nice because you stay I still got it in my head I can still play yeah but my body's gone nah <laughs> You know, don't be silly. But in my head I'm thinking yeah I think I can still do it <laughs> so where's, you know, where's the boy playing now? Well, no, he's just playing local football right. on a Sunday. Yeah. Um, he's enjoying himself. He's, and funny enough, I've seen now, that is uh, on a Sunday morning, I've now seen ex-non-league uh, players playing. Yeah. So he's playing at a high standard. It's like a Premier League. Yeah. Uh, right? But I've seen a lot of ex-senior um, non-league players who are playing, mm. who have dropped down out of the non-league level and playing mm. Sunday morning, which is, in a way, is good in terms of that quality of football on a Sunday, but it's sad to see that they've done that. Do you know what I mean? Because they're all quite young. I mean, do you see um, anybody while you're, you know, while you're out there watching the board? Do you see anybody out there that you think, blimey, what you know, they should be playing higher? I've seen, I've seen what I've been, you know, people knock um, Sunday morning football, but I've seen, I think the level of coaching has gone up in terms of um, Sunday morning teams. Right? I saw some, mini, I've seen some mini soccer kids football and I think the standard is pretty good you know because of the co- FA's um, courses that are online and making sure that you need to qualify level one two and three whatever I think that's helped on football the only thing is is that I'm a little bit worried that we're producing robots as such mm-hmm. right you know pass pass we pass pass the ball you know get into position whereas we're not allowing enough individual flair to come through you know we want players to do certain things at certain times and to do it in that way, whereas we're taking away that little bit of individual ability. And that's my only fear for it, you know. But saying that, uh, I saw a mixed game of football under eight, and this girl was brilliant. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So um, she'll get picked up by a pro club, easy. Mm. But, um, yeah, I think the standard's coming up. And I think a lot more players who do who do carry on are all at that same level as well. So it's really hard for anyone to come through that extra 5%. And, and you know, as you said, they, they, you know, you look at certain teams out there, you know, the likes of hashtag United that are in the Essex senior league and you've got, uh, you've got DT's team as well, DTFC, which are in the Olympian league and that. So there's teams that are coming from there, which have got, you know, sort of a big following on social media and stuff like that, that they're bringing these players through. And you see some of the, you know, the, the, the players on there, and they look, you know, really decent players. Yeah, I think a lot of them, um, I think I, my understanding is um, a lot of them come from ex-academies, mm-hmm. right? So, or they've been at a pro club and haven't made it, so they've just dropped down. My only concern is with these new clubs as such, is it a two-season wonder, a three-season wonder? Mm. You know, because obviously they've got the quality of players involved, right? Um but you need, you know, um, money pay plays. And if they're not getting the crowds or the sponsorship, you know, how long are they going to last for? Mm. You know, and that's my dread for the whole football structure for this season, in particular with what's happening with COVID, mm. involving COVID, you know. 
there must be a lot of football clubs looking over their shoulders wondering if they're going to be able to survive. Mm. You know, so, saw, I mean, I don't know if you saw Tim's interview with Jeff Brazier on BT Sport the other week and, and, and he turned around on there and said, like, you know, if they open up the, the Chapman stand on the other side, they get quoted as an elite club and then that means then that they can't play football. So they've got to shut a whole stand off just so they stay on elite and you know, it just seems crazy, doesn't it? You know, just... Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's difficult. You know, what can you do on that side of things? I mean, I, but, um, I even heard that Wellstone were playing the other day and they were saying there that they weren't allowed any t- uh, fans in the ground it's itself, but they could go into the clubhouse and watch the game on BT Sport in a clubhouse. But they had to black the windows out so no one could see the game through the windows because that was illegal as well. <laughs> and that, just crazy stuff. Yeah, people just getting round the system in it somewhere, <laughs> you know, somehow. That's just mental. It is. It is. But, you know, who knows what's going to happen, mm. you know, with the Football League and all that night. You know, um, it's just, a, it's going to be a really difficult year for a lot of clubs, mm. I think, yeah, on this season. Um, but saying that, have we, re, you know, have some of the non-league clubs evolved? Football in terms of their football ground facilities, mm. quite a lot of them have, but a lot, there's a hell of a lot that I still go to or I've been to, and they haven't changed since I played. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you, you just wonder maybe it might be the right thing for them to sort of you know start again as such. Mm. So I mean, in your in your time, I suppose last sort of question for you, in your time at Harlow, what was your most favourite memory, and what was the you know the, the sort of nightmare memory? That's a really difficult question. Right, right, that is, seriously, that is a really difficult question. I think my worst memory, right, was the realization that I was having to leave Harlow Town Football Club to join another club, right, um, to gain first team football. Mm. I think that was the hardest. I think that was probably one of the worst things to do, right? But I never forget, in the sense that Alan Howick was chairman at the time, and he sent me a letter saying, wishing me that, uh, you know, he saying he was great. They were grateful for what I'd done for the club and being involved, and they wished me all the best mm. at my new on my onwards on my new football journey. And sometimes, if I can relay this on. Sometimes at football level, and like all walks of life, sometimes it hits you on the headlight and thinking, God, this is the worst thing. But in the end, it turned out to be the right thing to do because then I had a, quite a successful career at Stevenage, mm. you know, with Paul Fairclough having win promotion, cups and, and, and football trophies with them. Do you know what I mean? Which I may or may not have won with Harlow Town. Mm. So at the time... The, probably the best bit is being recognised by your peers in the football team uh, to win an, an award. Mm. And I was, you know, I, was, I think I was 22. And there's always in the back of your mind, am I good enough with all these other senior players? Mm. As a youngster, I don't know if it happens to me, but with me, it's like there was always a question mark. Um, was I good enough to be in their company with all these players who were older than me, who had played them all day? And I won... Um, players player of the year. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that to me uh, was a, a real privilege and honour to be recognised by those players. Mm. You know, and um, and also with the fans as well. I, you know, I always try to be respectful to the fans. I've still got some people who recognise me when not you, Dave, because you you didn't even remember that I played for Harlow Town. <laughs> but I still there are still people who who actually saw me play. Who were, who were young kids, ball boys, mm. right? Who were young kids who are now grown men with families and still say hello to me because mm. they remember. <laughs> and collecting their pensions, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was me hoping you were going to say your fondest memory of Arlo Town was sitting in a shop in Arlo on the radio with me. Nah. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> so, I mean... What was that like? I mean, that's your final question. Well, doing what was, the radio show? Yeah, what was that like? I that thought it was, freezing it was culture. kind of weird yeah. at first. It was really kind of weird, you know, but it was, um, I, I quite enjoyed it, 
you know, I didn't know what was going to happen on the night, to be honest. <laughs> we, you know, we what don't... sort of questions you were going to throw. <laughs> <laughs> we still don't to this day. And, th- and sometimes we didn't even know if the shop was going to open, if you had to <laughs> turned up with a key. <laughs> And it was. So, I think the one of the, the funniest memories of that was when you used to walk in there like that, and you used to do the uh, I think the hour before you came in or whatever it was, and the missus sitting outside with her coat on, sitting on the yeah, side. Yeah, bless her. Yeah, <laughs> freezing. She was freezing. We had all the heaters inside <laughs> our little boom, and she was freezing enough. You didn't even offer her make, make her a cup of tea. <laughs> oh dear, it was fun, yeah. but it was good. It was. Now a... the secrets are all coming out now, mate. That's I tell you, all coming. Out. They're all coming out now. Yeah. They were all good. Yeah, they were good days. But I don't, you know, I enjoyed it. I think, I don't know whether, um, I don't know if the non-league side of things, are we getting too complicated? Because every, every, it looks like every five years, we always change, they always change the structure of the leagues, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Or they add more teams to it. Well, they're supposed to be changing again, of course, this year until COVID hit. So now that's not going to be till next season because it's going to be an extra, I think it's step four league in the Southern League. Right. So there's going to be another And the point league. of that is... I'm not sure. I, I, if in all fairness, but I know they're, they're adding that extra extra league in, which then means there'll be more people coming out of the Essex Senior League, more people coming out of the you know the Kent League, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, going going up a step. Do you know what I mean? So, I think I suppose this season is really important that it does get finished of promotion and relegation, so that they can rebuild all the different leagues. Because at one stage, the, the the proposal that I saw was teams like Walthamstow and Hashtag and teams like this were going to be in the Isthmian this year, and of course then it's narrow it's all been moved about but someone did put it on there what they thought the breakdown of all the different leagues were going to be but uh, it would certainly be interesting but there's been I think someone said I think it was Christian said earlier on he said to me he said, but this year as well there's been so many crazy results um, you know even up to last night Basildon winning 6-0 this one winning this nil and there's been goals flying in absolutely everywhere this season it's just been yeah. a, a real sort of crazy start to the season and who knows who's going to win the leagues at this stage because it just seems to be going crazy. Right. Yeah. I, will, um, I always think like a non-league player, it's much more harder for a non-league player to play football than it is for a pro footballer. Mm. Because I think people tend to forget that at non-league level, you know, apart from, you know, the National League and maybe the National North and South, right, every other league is part-time. Do you know what I mean? A lot of the players are either... Um, have got other jobs they're doing, either working for someone or working for themselves, mm. right? And and I think when it was always an argument, I used to hear it all the time. You know, Harlow Town should have a team of, full of Harlow Town players, but the level of commitment that's needed, right? I think people totally underestimate it. Mm. You know what needs to be, uh, what needs what you need to do just to play football at non-league level. You yeah. know. The time involved in, in doing it is phenomenal. Mm. You know, in training, the football matches, the time to get the travel, you know, the, the, prep, the preparation in your head, just the, mm. the mentality of it all. It's a different breed from Sunday morning football or mm. Saturday morning football, yeah. you know. Um, and even, you know, I was fortunate enough to play with some pros. They can't believe, you know, how much time there is involved in in running a non-league club and how much time there is involved in playing for a non-league club you yeah. know mm-hmm. and i always take my hat off to any player who makes it at non-league level and you know i think they're doing great you know every single one who's out there playing is fantastic um not everyone sticks to it but those who do i think those who do stick it are the ones who are, re- are real lovers of the football of the game yeah you know yeah. Listen. And that's why I did it. I loved the game. Yeah. I wanted to play as high as I could. Mm. Well, listen, mate, I've really enjoyed having a chat. You always do. Always uh, enjoyable yeah. conversation. But uh, massive thank you for for today. Wish you all ah. the family for for the future as well. And uh, and don't be a stranger. Hopefully, we'll talk again soon. Yeah, and much the same to you and everyone else. You're doing a great job, and uh, hopefully, we'll see each other soon. I'll pop down to Harlow. I promise. Right. Yeah. No, <laughs> and, mate. Uh, Fingers crossed, we'll get promoted this year. Absolutely. We'll Come down and do the commentary with, with Jake. Yeah, <laughs> so that'll, that'll make no sense then. 
<laughs> anyway, mate, massive thank you. And of course, All we'll right, be mate. back with uh, my whole of my life in the future with more guests. For anybody you'd like to see us uh, have a chat to, then why not uh, send us the emails and texts and tweets and everything else to get a more Harlow uh, Town players past and present on the show as well. But uh, until next time, from me, from Migsy, thank you very much. Bye.